Coming up on Digital Music Trends, episode 160, recorded on the 4th of December 2013, Beats Music launching in January 2014, YouTube Music pushed to Q1 2014, Music Messaging, BT's upcoming music service, Spotify's Artist Initiative, HMV and lots more. Hello everyone and welcome to Digital Music Trends, I'm Andrea Linelli and this is a weekly show where we talk about and try to make sense of the latest news in the digital music industry and DMT is available as an audio and a video podcast on a variety of channels including iTunes, Moss Podcatchers, YouTube, SoundCloud, Mixcloud, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, TuneIn Radio and Audioboo. To get in touch with the show you can tweet us on at Trends or email us on contact at digitalmusictrends.com and on our first uh, December show as everyone's counting the days uh, towards the Christmas break I'm really happy to welcome uh, a fantastic panel. So first up, uh, Neil Cartwright, MD at Million Media and the Global Sales and Strategy Manager at uh, Valley Arm Digital, uh, which is a digital music distributor in the Asia-Pacific region. So hi, Neil, and great to have you on. How's it going? Going very well. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, great to be on. Thank you. It's great, to, it's great to have you here actually in uh, in the video as well because last time I think we had some some uh, glitches with the with the video side but, um, but it's great to I was in actually... Manila last time yeah, it's, yeah exactly it's slightly easier this time <laughs> slightly easier definitely and uh, then we have Sid Lawrence a tinkerer and a developer at uh, We Make Awesome Shit which you can find at We We Make Awesome dot it so hey Sid and uh, thanks for joining us. Hey, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for having me. And it's a week before the, uh, you know, it's the precursor to the Music Hack Day. So we're going to talk about exactly that later that. as well. It's Music Hack Day this weekend. Yeah, yeah very exciting. And uh, finally, Ryan Rauscher, who's project manager at Mix Labs, uh, which is the competence center for the digital music business at the Pop Academy in Mannheim. So hey, Ryan, and great to see you. Ah, uh, yeah. Thanks for having me on the show again. It's great. It's uh, great to have you. Uh, how's how's things in Mannheim? All good. Yeah, very good. We're running some courses on digital uh, music topics right now and doing an interesting project with uh, students about music analytics. So um, all as usual here, but um, that's great. Awesome. And so uh, we opened the show with the news that actually just came out literally an hour ago uh, in a short post uh, on his personal blog, which is kind of an odd place to announce it. But I guess, uh, you know, uh, anywhere is good on the Internet these days, as long as you have a decent server to uh, withstand the traffic. Uh, Ian Rogers, who is the CEO of uh, Beats Music, of course, uh, ex-CEO of uh, Topspin, uh, announced that the service uh, will launch in the US in January 2014. Of course, there was a lot of speculation around the launch date because they had announced in January that it would launch by the end of this year. But of course, with no news it seemed pretty obvious that they were going to have to delay it to uh, early next year uh, there was no mention of the word daisy which was a code word under which uh, the service had been supposedly uh, being built uh, and so i guess they went with the brand name which makes a lot of sense because beats music you know is such a strong brand name around the world and so it makes sense to launch a service uh, with that name instead of giving it a weird flower name that didn't make any sense to anybody else um, uh, and so uh, the service also um, offers the opportunity of people for us uh, users uh, to register their username in order to reserve it. Uh, of course, the service is only going to launch in the US in January, uh, which is, uh, you know, the nature of uh, uh, these deals, uh, especially on the licensing front when the new services come out. Uh, uh, and uh, amongst the facts uh, that uh, Rogers listed, he points out that the service is in, in internal private beta and only a few artists and influencers are having access to it in order to get early feedback. So we don't know much more about the service, uh, uh, we know a launch date uh, and we know that it's happening. So just a quick round, uh, uh, Sid, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on, on, on uh, you know, Beats Music so far? We don't know anything, uh, but at least it's happening. So that's something, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, so I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Ian Rogers, so uh, I would like Beats to do well. But then at the same time, do we really need yet another one? Um, I mean, even yeah. just from podcast stance, I mean, you at the beginning of the show went through the list of 20 different podcast sites uh, yeah. where you can find this. Um, do we need more? Yeah. Um, so, it, but I also found it interesting with Topspin announcing their deal with Spotify as right. well, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Ian, who used to be at Topspin and I'm sure is still very much involved, um, have... I don't know if that deal, how long that deal is or what the, we don't even know the intricacies of the deal. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it could just yeah. be a case of uh, Spotify have approached Topspin and said, can we do this? Yeah. So Which would be silly be... to refuse because, of Absolutely, course. Absolutely, yeah. of course. So, so yeah, no, it's it's an interesting uh, story, and I think you know, I guess Beats, uh, you know, you asked if do we need another one? I guess Beats is the the only service that launches with such a strong, like the first time that a service launches with such a strong brand behind it. So it's going to be interesting to see whether that drives any mainstream adoption, or whether there's going to be any bundles with headphones. 
that could be a winner if they bundle the service with a headphone package. Uh, Ryan, what are your thoughts on Beats? Yeah, well, I think that's especially uh, interesting to see what uh, what it means for a streaming service um, to be a hardware or, or headphone manufacturer. What it means for getting uh, um, for uh, for reach for you know reaching new customers because I think that is one of the um, obviously one of the, the most important challenges for streaming services right now to um, um, to expand to get, to get a lot of users. So it'll be interesting to see what um, what Beats as a brand um, for headphones can can do and yeah. to, that, to, to that respect. Absolutely, uh, and Neil, uh, with your international expertise as well, you know, do you feel like Beats is a is a service that could come out of the gates and uh, start uh, branching out internationally without the same hurdles that other services are facing in terms of having to ident like find an audience and uh, tell them who they are and what they're all about? Um, yes, yeah, I think it's a very exciting launch. Uh, the Beats name is a global brand. Um, it's backed by some big players in the industry. I think Jimmy Irvine, um, Dr. Dre are all there behind the scenes and uh, they've got the, uh, the, the backing of the likes of Universal. So they've got uh, a lot in their favor. I, I recall that there was a, a lot written at the time um, about Top Spin trying to integrate with more services. And I think the Spotify was, uh, Spotify announcement is an, an example, but with Ian's background at Topspin, I think they will go for the far deeper integration between the, the streaming service and the artist. And it's always been a criticism that the, the artist doesn't know who is playing their music. It's very hard to access the fans who are listening to your tracks. Yeah. Um, and this has been true of iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, the fans are anonymous to the artist. I suspect that what Beats are going to try and do, um, and they, they said this a few months ago, was they were going to try and bridge that gap. Yeah. So that, that there's going to be data protection, obviously, but if you're a fan listening to an artist, I suspect that you'll be able to opt in to receive more marketing messages or, as we've seen with the Top Spin integration with Spotify, that ability to buy merchandise and tickets supplied by the artist. Yeah, yeah, so I, th I think it's a very exciting announcement. Um, unlike Ardio, perhaps, uh, who had to go from a standing start and build their brand, Beats have got that brand. They can bring in some of the biggest names in music to endorse. They've already said, haven't they, they've got the talent playing around with the service and no doubt that's going to include some massive names that Jimmy can probably call up and say check this out get a few quotes from you know an M&M or, uh, or whoever his mates are uh, and that will launch the service around the world because yeah. these artists are big around the world so yeah I think it's going to be a very very exciting service I hope it doesn't let us down yeah. that's the only that, that's, that's one thing yeah, absolutely. That's that's the thing that we talked about uh, extensively on the show over the past year is uh, the expectation that the service set. And uh, Seda, yeah. from a developer's perspective, I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, uh, Ian remarked on his blog post on how he uh, felt like he didn't have any pressure from Beats to get the service out <laughs> by his deadline, uh, just be, you know, and that gave him the time to uh, polish it up, you know, make sure that it was working the way they wanted it to instead of uh, coming out of the gates with sort of a half-baked product. Do you think that uh, the failure of Twitter music may have also played a hand in like making people a little bit more cautious in releasing a product that they're absolutely certain about instead of trying to hype up something that in the end doesn't quite work out with the, with the consumers? Well, it, yes, but at the same time, it all depends on what and how you hype. I mean, you shouldn't, right. I, I mean, you should always be careful about hyping anything, even if you've spent months and months on it, right? Even if it's something that is perfect, uh, you've got to, Damn sure, uh, make you've got to make sure that it uh, lives up to the hype. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's always. I think you always get a much better polished product if you can spend the time tweaking it. Um, I mean, it's. But then at the same time, nothing's ever finished and nothing's ever perfect. Yeah. So there's got to be a point when he uh, he's going. To, they're going to have to launch it before it's perfect, right? right? Exactly. And they're going to have to launch it before it's finished, even. Because if it's finished, what are they going to be doing in two years' time? Yeah. I mean, Facebook isn't finished. Um, 
Spotify itself isn't finished. Nothing right? is finished on the internet. Exactly. So <laughs> it, there is a there always has to be some time of deadline. Yeah. But uh, it'll be interesting to see when it is. I mean, I I really hope that it does have a huge, huge uh, integrated where. Uh, integration with Topspin because I think we all kind of agree that we would quite like artists to make more money yeah. um, the actual art people who are creating the work so uh, yeah I hope that it will be a success it will be interesting to see when it does come out I am sick and tired of the others I have to admit I am only giving them money not because I like them yeah. but because I want access to the music and yet I still also buy music I don't know it'll be interesting it'll be really interesting yeah, yeah, certainly. And uh, looking at uh, the, you know, uh, uh, the announcement, I still call it Daisy because we've just been uh, we've been calling it Daisy for the last year. Or so uh, of uh, Beats music, uh, you know, that was the it kind of uh, came in as the first story uh, all of a sudden. But the first story I was going to open with was actually talking about YouTube and the YouTube uh, uh, and the new YouTube uh, 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 streaming music service mm -hmm. that's uh, uh, supposedly uh, going to happen in Q1 of 2014. Uh, you know. This is an interesting uh, story just because there is nothing that's come out of YouTube. Uh, the one thing that came out uh, last week was the fact that uh, the uh, Android police uh, discovered bits of code within the uh, Android app of YouTube that uh, sort of demonstrated or proved that this service is being worked on and is happening. And uh, there were lines of code that were very clear about pointing to, uh, you know, the new YouTube uh, uh, service, uh, uh, you know, whether those were planted or not, we'll, we're never going to know. Uh, but, uh, you know, so everybody thought uh, last week that the service was going to launch uh, very soon. But uh, then again, Peter Kafka, uh, Peter Kafka from All Things D posted a piece yesterday saying that uh, even the YouTube service is not quite done yet. And uh, it will also see a launch in Q1 of 2014. So uh, it's kind of like two giants now here, Beats Music and uh, uh, YouTube, which is a, an even bigger uh, behemoth of the, of the music industry uh, now. Uh, going head to head in Q1 of 2014, and also, of course, the existing music services that are already out there and have an audience uh, having to fight back hard in order to keep the customers that they've already acquired. So it's going to be a battle next year, right? Uh, uh, Ryan, well, you know, for, for the German perspective as well, how, how do you feel that consumers will react? Uh, are they ready to jump ship from uh, one service to the other? Or do you think that people that have adopted Spotify are just going to stick with it, or people that have adopted uh, uh, Deezer are going to stick with it? Well, I'm not quite sure, but I um, I did a course last week and asked my students who was uh, using Spotify. And it was like um, in our class, um, 90%. Um, and uh, only one person tried out uh, another streaming service. So um, that, that's the way it looked like. And um, I asked them, you know, I talked about challenges of, of finding a USP as a service. And we, we talked a bit how, um, how difficult it is. Um, yeah. You know, get people um, to switch. So I think it's a, a really big challenge. In terms of YouTube, it's interesting. We have a, um, the streaming surf, the service here from from uh, TV channels. Sorry, Zima. called. Um, I lost you for a second there. Um, there's a streaming service called Empire here in Germany. Um, and from the TV channels, Prozibens at Arts. They have um, a video platform called My Videos. It's going to be their um, sort of their USP here in Germany, and um, besides the media um, ad power they have. So I think uh, in terms of YouTube going into um, the stream, music video streaming market, that's going to be very interesting to see what happens uh, yeah. there and what Empire uh, can do with their video um, and compared to, to YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And Neil, uh, YouTube has already got a catalog of uh, potentially, you know, the, the largest catalog of music uh, coming from the international market as well, whilst other services are really struggling in acquiring that catalog, even if they are present in those markets. Uh, do you feel like uh, YouTube can leverage that international reach uh, to uh, create the best, in, you know, international catalog yet? Absolutely. No, 100%. Uh, YouTube is not only the biggest music streaming service by a long, long way in the US and Europe, but also Southeast Asia. Um, it's, it delivers millions of hits for the labels. It generates increasing amounts of revenue for those labels, just the same way as it does over here. Uh, they've already got the content. Um, I, I can see it becoming a, a uh, probably the, old, the, the the one global service. It will probably leapfrog over all the uh, Beats, uh, Deezer, um, Spotify, who of course have to get the licenses in every country. 
Um, and they've got the muscle of, uh, you know, of, a, of, a, of an immensely profitable company right now, yeah. um, who are not only number one in music, but across a number of different platforms, whether it be sport uh, and TV and cooking and uh, any everything you can think of. So they're laying the foundations for that for a whole pay-per-view platform, um, subscription TV. Yeah. So again, very exciting. Uh, how I still don't understand how it is going to work with Google Access, Access All Areas, and Google Play, because yeah. of course they launched that service this year. Um, YouTube are going to be launching next year. Um, those those two services are going to have to integrate somehow, yeah. <laughs> because I mean, otherwise, the same company has got two competing services. Yeah, I mean, what I what I was wondering, uh, I was writing something the other day. And the one thing that I thought about was demographics. Uh, so I was I was thinking whether, you know, because the demographic of Spotify, uh, especially on people that are paying, is uh, sort of over twenty, tw you know, twenty four year olds, uh, and that's not the demographic of the core audience of YouTube right now. There's a lot of teens on there. So whether YouTube has got any plans to keep that path sort of separate, so that Google Play Musical Access becomes the destination for uh, you know, 20 plus, and then uh, YouTube becomes the platform of adoption of teenagers that grow, grew up with the service and might become willing to pay for it in a year or two's time uh, once they uh, we start getting some disposable I'm income. Yeah, I'm skeptical. I think it will take a lot to convince teenagers to pay for anything. Yeah. Um, Sid? Uh, sorry, uh, Sid, what are your thoughts? You know, you worked a lot on YouTube uh, stuff as well for your, for your hacks. Well, I mean, and... I kind of totally agree. It's, I was actually, so my girlfriend's a teacher, and she asked the class, it was, a, it was a few weeks ago, they were talking about morals, and then they were talking, then they got on to piracy, and then it got on to uh, where they currently listen to music. Right. And there is very much... The kids, Sid. So the, the kids are about 14, 15. Right. Um, so it's secondary school. I don't know what year exactly, but around that it would have been. And there were very much three types of uh, people um, who answered the questions. And there were the musos who, who still buy music now and go to a lot of gigs and know that artists make their money from gigs. Then there are the, the, the people who are, who, who are uh, tech, tech nerds who have always pirated uh, who will continue to pirate. And then there's those in between that just listen on YouTube. Don't think, actually think about who's making any money from that. And yeah. also don't go to gigs. But at the same time, they said that they would quite like to somehow give their money to the artists. But they were more than happy with YouTube. So it's, uh, it's a really interesting one. It was, I was quite surprised how they were wanting to give more money than I would have expected. And I don't think they just would have said that answer. They are very much aware that they're not giving any money to any of their favorite artists right now. Yeah. Um, and it was, just a, it was just an interesting one. I thought there was more positive responses from being willing to pay a YouTube, um, pay for a, a subscription YouTube than I expected. But it all depends what the difference between the free version is. Exactly, and the price point as well, because we don't yeah. know. YouTube could easily decide to undercut everybody else and price it at six ninety nine or whatever, uh, and and that could be. And as we all know, they don't have a huge disposable income, so no, exactly. It's, you know, uh, it's just it's t tough times now for Google. So, <laughs> what I reckon they might even do. There were you mentioned earlier, um, Neil, about two uh, competing services. Well, Google are actually quite good at doing that. Right now, they've got Chrome OS and Android, which are two totally different operating systems. And even just from a browser, they had Google Chrome and the Android browser, which were yeah. running um, parallel. Um, so, yeah, they do seem to be quite good at doing yeah. that. So I wouldn't put it past them at all. I'm not sure if they would do it successfully, but they're just good at ending up doing that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Possibly one of the... Uh one of the reasons that everyone will want to pay a subscription as well is to get rid of the adverts, which are becoming more and more intrusive and infuriating. Yeah. You know, the, the number of times you want to watch a video and have to sit through one of these 30 second adverts that's of no interest. Um, is, is that worth 
five, six pounds a month to get rid of all the adverts? Absolutely. I was just thinking, you know, I, would, I, would pay that, I would pay that and keep my Spotify subscription. I would just pay it to get rid of the adverts. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that I, uh, I think is, is an interesting uh, dilemma for YouTube right now is what's going to happen to the content because they have a deal with the, I mean, apparently they have deals already in place with all the majors uh, from what I've read. Uh, but the majority of uh, Sony's and Universal Music frontline content that is on YouTube comes via Vivo. And Vivo doesn't have the licenses to provide that kind of stuff, so they would have had to go directly to the labels to get the same tracks from you know, Universal. But if the videos are not on YouTube in the first place, because they're not YouTube, they are Vivo's video, videos, what's going to happen in that case? <laughs> That's like a really interesting uh, thing, because you know, of course the biggest videos in the world right now are those videos that are coming from Vivo uh, on the music front. And so if YouTube doesn't have them because they're not theirs, then how does the consumer get hold of them? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit of a question mark on that front. All will be revealed, I'm sure. Yeah, all will be revealed, exactly. Uh, and uh, Ryan, I want to tap into your, uh, uh, also your sort of younger person's contacts, given that you have so many students and stuff, uh, talking about messaging. So there's a, uh, you know, it's a hot topic right now. Uh, tech companies are, are getting bought to left, right and center that have to do with messaging and uh, facilitate that. They're getting offers like crazy. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, there's big bucks left, you know, on the table for, for people that can do that kind of stuff right. Uh, now there's a company called Pinktune that has raised a million pounds here in London, actually. Uh, I, I don't know the guys yet. I, I'm, I'm sure I'll get in touch with them soon. Uh, to develop a messaging app that is based around music. So Pinktune is currently available for, I, for iOS. And after you sign up, you verify your mobile number and away you go you can search for tracks uh, uh, that are searched through uh, um, YouTube and SoundCloud and then you select the track uh, uh, if you can compose a short text that uh, sends the text via normal uh, phone signal uh, with a link and people can open it uh, of course most people have smartphones these days and uh, and consume that content so uh, it's an interesting idea of course uh, I'm, I'm just wondering you know we were reading about uh, uh, other companies that are doing messaging that are starting to integrate music uh, options within their services, uh, uh, whether that's uh, more of a feature rather than an actual service in itself. Uh, uh, Ryan, do, do you think that there is space here for a company to come in and uh, own the space of uh, messaging around music, or is it just messaging and whatever content it is, there just has to be one service that takes it all in? Well, um, I am a bit skeptical. Um, I, I did try out um, Pingtune, and, and I, it's, it's really beautiful. Um, beautifully made. It's straightforward. It's um, it's really fun to use and and, and things. Um, and of course, um, mobile messaging is is really big in Germany too. I think it's um, the same picture as in the UK or in the US, except that um, I I think WeChat is more popular here in Germany than it is in, in UK, for example. So it is a very interesting field. Um, but that was one of my first thoughts, is um, do people want that as a standalone app? Because um, I think it was Tango, or, or a different, um, that's the name, yeah, in the U.S., a mobile messaging service. Um, they uh, are wanting to, or did go into the music um, uh, space. Um, so that could be... Uh, WhatsApp as well. I think they have some sort of music feature. Yeah, now. so that could be a big competitor. You know, you use your messaging service and it's just like, uh, you know, press a button and then share music. Or, uh, instead of a, a photo, um, and also maybe streaming services that have like a, um, a WhatsApp, um, a share button, you know, that have social sharing embedded into them. Um, so I'm I'm skeptical about that. Um, we'll have to see how it, you know how um, Pingtune develops in the UK. Yeah. I, I looked in the numbers as as well, so it looks good. They're going in, you know going up on the charts in the UK and in Germany. There, they're not really um, popular yet. Of course. Of course. Um, so we'll have to see, but I'm, I don't really think um, it will be a standalone device uh, right. other than a feature on a, on a uh, different service. Yeah, I said uh, again, we, we, you know, we come up again, again, and again, and again. Every year we come up to the question, you know, is this a feature or is this a service? Uh, what are your thoughts? So I've only heard of them briefly beforehand because right. uh, they, one of them sent us an email not too long ago. We, um, I feel really bad because um, we haven't replied to them yet. Um, at the same time, I also didn't realize that they had just raised how much money? A million. Um, yeah. <laughs> One point. Okay. It's now, a million that, pounds. It's a million pounds. It's $1.6 million. Yeah. Is that valuation or actually raised? That's raised. Uh, as reported, it's raised. It was reported okay. by TechCrunch. Yeah. 
Well, so um, if I was to add a service onto Tomo.hk where you could send yourself a text message via Twilio or a friend a text with a link back to it, which already plays it from SoundCloud or YouTube, then um, would that mean that I would be able to be given $1.6 million? Um, I, I'm, yeah. <laughs> you I, will I, when you have I'm an app. So, I'm so amazed. <laughs> I'm still waiting for the Tomahawk thing. app. <laughs> There's a website. It works on mobile. It's true. <laughs> I mean... Um, <laughs> I, I'm not sure why I, I, I've spent a few days on it um, to make it. If I want to make it into an app, it will take me a few weeks. That's and a, yeah. I don't see how anyone can make... Uh, so someone has given them $1.6 million. Now, from my experience, venture capitalists don't like uh, get it, allowing you to sell the company until they've made 10 times what they invest. So they're hoping that they're... Their $1.6 million is going to be $16 million. Now, yeah. I imagine for that they would have maybe a 20% share of the company. I don't know. Obviously, I'm very much guessing. So <laughs> that would then mean that the company would have to be sold for $100 million before the uh, venture capitalists will uh, allow it or make a mil uh, $100 million. Now, from a service that, as yeah, it's just a feature in whether it is um, a messaging app or whether it's a music app, it's kind of... It, it's Instagram for dogs, right? I mean, it's kind of, um, uh, I'm amazed if they ever make any money from that. And I mean, um, both the investors and the company. And I, I, you know, I, I'm absolutely open. You know, I really want to have a chat with them and see if there's, you know, probably, there's probably more on the roadmap than, than what the app uh, gives away. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping at least. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what, what that, what that uh, brings. But uh, uh, Neil, do you feel like, uh, uh, like I said, in the sense that it's, uh, it's a difficult space to crack, and maybe perhaps they're going to get acquired by another messaging service that doesn't have music embedded and and mm. and needs that part of it. As a as a standalone app, I'm, I'm more than just cynical. I, I would just say it's not going to work, and the reason is because the, the same reason that en a lot of social networking based around any one particular um, niche is very difficult to launch, and the the reason is that if you, you the, the power of these apps is to have all your friends using it if if all your friends don't use it then you have to have uh, a load of different apps and remember which friend uses which app right if you take a random sample of people from the population let's uh, take 10 people two of them statistically will be passionate about music two will be enthusiastic three will be casual three will be indifferent as in more people uh, are indifferent and casual about music and love it so you'll have the two passionate music fans talking to themselves none of their friends will be using the app um it's it's it, it's the power of the network is 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 not going to work whether they can develop it though and then sell it as you say, to uh, a messaging app that are looking to integrate music is, is, is absolutely what I would be investing in. Yeah. But I, I don't think, think it's ever going to take off as an app to rival Viber or, or WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah, it's a difficult one. I, I mean, the, the one thing that I was, uh, when I used it, was positive is the fact that you weren't locked into only messaging people that were uh, also joining the app, because that's one of the main problems that uh, now some of these recommendation uh, discovery services have is that you have to get uh, such a critical mass of users onto the app that in the end nobody ends up using it because you only have one friend, one other friend that uses it. You know, I might have 10 on some of these apps because we're all music tech people and so we're all on this, trying all the different apps that are happening, but that's, that's the only reason essentially. I none of my normal friends from Facebook are using any of the services, so it's always, <coughs> it's always difficult to... Uh, to gauge what's going to happen to them. Yeah, and I've never felt a need to send a clip of a music track to anyone. Right, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll forward a link to the whole track, or a link to the playlist, but yeah. to take a clip of a track yeah. doesn't really fulfil a need. Exactly. Oh, well, it's, it's an interesting one. We're going to keep an eye on them. <laughs> what, I, what I think needs to happen is the WhatsApps and the Snapchats uh, and the WeChats need to offer an API. Um, right. If they allow people to create things mm. that can send links, uh, which, I mean, you, I'm sure you can. If I opened up WhatsApp, I could send a, a link to a friend. Um, if they had an API, I could literally create it so that you could send a Tomador HK link via uh, a WhatsApp message yeah. with one click of a button mm. somewhere. 
Um, and then that lets the user choose. Um, f I mean, if you for those that don't know what Tomahawk HK or Tomahawk are, it's a it's one music um, platform that plays music from all of the other platforms. So it, it's just a player. I mean, it's not a platform. It's just a music player that plays from Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, etc. All the legitimate ones. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, if that existed, it would be, it'd be easy. It would, and it would be easy. And they're all discussing it. There are unofficial ways to do Snapchat stuff. We've been playing around internally. Haven't yet launched any projects with it, but um, it is possible. Um, WeChat and uh, WhatsApp are not aware of. Right. Right. Uh, uh, cool. Well, well, I think we can close on close on that subject. And there's actually a really great piece uh, uh, posted by Darren Hemmings, uh, who uh, posted a, a piece called uh, what was it called? Sorry, one second. Music versus the web have we reached a social media tipping point? Uh, I'll put the link in the show notes, so it's definitely worth a read. He's not on the show today, uh, but uh, it's definitely worth mentioning where he talks about uh, Facebook declining as an indicator of uh, of uh, something spreading. Uh, you know. Uh, whether it's a music release in, in his case and his campaigns and YouTube and uh, Shazam being much better indicators of whether something is catching fire online uh, or not. So that's that's a, definitely an interesting uh, piece to read. Uh, talking about uh, a service that in Britain uh, I would have never ever put any money on them launching a music service uh, is a BT. So uh, I thought we'd seen... <laughs> I thought we'd we'd seen the end of uh, I uh, you know uh, built telcos trying to build uh, music services, but apparently that's not the case. And the disasters oh. of uh, Sky and uh, Virgin Virgin Media Music uh, have not proven the point yet. Uh, and I guess maybe the O2 Tracks is success. So if you don't know what O2 Tracks is, O2 Tracks is a UK initiative by the company O2, which is a mobile provider where you can get the top 40 of the UK uh, cashed on your phone for a pound a week. And that's proven really successful. Maybe that success has spurred BT to try and go this way. But uh, uh, the Guardian and the Financial Times reported that uh, the company is... Uh, 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 about uh, to launch uh, a music service uh, by the end of the year, apparently. Uh, sign a, they, they signed the deal with Universal Music for 150 albums, which will, will be available via the uh, uh, company's uh, TV box, uh, which they provide to uh, some of the customers who opt in to the TV option. Uh, and, you know, BT wants to increase the number of albums available to 1,000, but I, I guess, given the number, that it's going to be mostly uh, pop high-profile releases, uh, and uh, the company will charge a £3 monthly fee which will be added uh, to the, of course, uh, to the to the bill that they already send. So it's quite a painless way of integrating that uh, service into the into the, the everyday experience of the users without it feeling particularly expensive. Uh, and you know, uh, apparently there's going to be a lyrics option where you can view the lyrics on it as well. Uh, but you know, overall, it just seems like a very strange thing, uh, just because. Uh, okay, I understand that they don't want to give that part of the business away to companies that are already existing, like Spotify and stuff. Uh, but at the same time, it's it, it is very difficult these days to launch a music service that is only catered, like geared at a very small subsection of the population that has the BT box in the first place. So I don't know. Uh, whoever uh, said, <laughs> you know, you're 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 uh, incensed by this. Do, do you feel like it makes? Oh, any not at all. I mean, I. I... Uh, I, I will always wish everybody the best of luck. Yeah, that's um, true. With any idea that they might have. Um, <laughs> any idea. Oh, well, sure. <laughs> I'm, uh, I think if, if you have something that you want to do well, then you, we should hope that it does well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I personally, I, I don't know. I don't have one of the BT boxes, so I'm not a target audience. Right. Um, so... It's uh, it's an interesting move for me. I mean, it's it's quite cheap, and if it is the, those top a thousand albums for um, a mum to subscribe to, um, or whoever it might be, then if it fulfills a gap for them, then perfect. Yeah, it's just weird. I, th I think it's weird because of the company. It's weird because of the the consumption device as well. I don't think there's many people that are listening to music via their television yet as well. So. So this is something that I also will have totally agreed with you. However, however, okay. Not too long ago, we got a smart TV that's got Spotify on it, and although we've got uh, Apple TV so that we can airplay to the TV if we want to, yeah. for because uh, that's also the best speaker system. But um, I've been using Spotify on the TV via 
the remote control okay. as though it's relatively easy to do, awesome. which I am amazed and surprised by. And um, you have a good system as well hooked up to it, I, I, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So our best sound system comes from our TV or goes, yeah, comes from our TV. Yeah. And, um, and I've been using Spotify on the TV, which I never imagined I would do. And I never really saw why I would want to do it, yeah. especially while well, I've got a keyboard that I can type much more easily than I can use a keyboard on a screen with a remote control. But actually, <laughs> I just use it for playing my starred tracks or playing right, some playlists. The playlists, yeah, exactly. I, I don't try and search for things. Sure. But for, it's quicker and easier for me to turn it that than to airplay, which was a, a, a surprise for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, uh, in Germany, do you have any uh, big telcos that provide their own services still in terms of music uh, streaming or music consumption? Um, no, we, we have um, partnerships right now. We, there's still some um, music uh, services that have been around for, for, uh, for some years, but um, right now it's more... Um, Uh, strategic partnerships with um, with Spotify, of course, with the Deutsche Telekom, or um, recently Vodafone. Um, I think they announced that last week with uh, Empire, the service I mentioned before. Um, so they're giving young people, um, um, to 20, up to 25 years, giving them uh, up to two years of free access to to that streaming service. So wow. that was that's actually the way. Um, they're going now in, in Germany. So that's interesting, actually. That news has not made it into the feeds internationally. I, I haven't seen that anywhere yet, so it's, uh, I'm glad you're pointing that out. Uh, and uh, Neil, on, on your front, uh, do you feel that, you know, have you seen any of this stuff happening in, in Asia in your travels uh, or, or over the last couple of years? Yeah, uh, the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest service in South Korea, uh, Melon, is uh, backed by SK Telecom. Uh, right. That is uh, it's very similar that for a low cost, which I think is, uh, it went up from $3 to $6 a month uh, for unlimited streaming and unlimited downloads, and they hold about 80% of the South Korean market. The, the challenge for the, the industry, as I, as I said before, is if you divide the population up, you've got the very enthusiastic music fans who will probably gravitate towards Spotify and beats, which leaves millions of people um, who, who don't want to pay for a, a premium subscription service. And it's how to get them, how to monetize them to some degree. So even three pounds a month is more than zero, which is what a lot of them are currently paying. Yeah. So you, you offer them this, this relatively straightforward deal, three pounds a month onto your bill. You've already got a BT line. Um, and it, it starts to it, it starts to provide a service for all those millions of people who probably aren't going to pay ten pounds a month for Spotify or Beats, however good it is. Um, it's a shame BT are doing it. I've, I've never seen them succeed at anything <laughs> like this. And I, I'm going back to the late '90s when I was dealing with them on all sorts of. Uh, music services they have never been able to launch anything but they they recently invested hundreds of millions into the football rights they they are acquiring rights to other sports i think music is probably part of this bigger play bigger strategy that they've got which is to become a content provider as well as a, a telecom absolutely they, they were talking about um in, in the wording, it says something about live concerts, and I don't know if that plays a role in there because that might be something interesting depending on what they're planning there. But when you're talking about live sport events and stuff, I don't know that that's maybe um, uh, watching live concerts on the TV that might be um, something they could could do well. Yeah, it could be an interesting vertical. I mean, I uh, think that could definitely work. Yeah. I mean, as always, it's difficult to gauge how it will work, just because uh, if you if you take into account the production costs of having to put on a live streamed concert on something like a, you know on a, on a proper you know high high definition streaming services like like what BT would probably offer, like how many people would that appeal to, and how much money would it take for them to break even? Are they willing to lose money in it? It's just it would be an interesting thing. You know, you're gonna get so many people interested in sports, but it's only gonna be a 
much more limited amount of people interested in a specific act mm. at any given time. So yeah, it's definitely an interesting one to, to look out for. Uh, I think, but uh, I, I feel like I'm hating on everything today. It's kind of like, <laughs> why am I hating on everything? It's just I'm, I'm quite in a good mood as well. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> but I'm actually got, okay. Let, let's let's switch gears to something a, a, a bit more uh, uh, positive because I'm actually really excited about all the stuff that came out of Spotify uh, in the last couple of days. Uh, you know, really, you know, we've had a lot of silence from Spotify when it came to all the complaints made by, by musicians. They had a very similar response every time to the criticism that were thrown left, right and center at them over the past uh, sort of year, really, uh, uh, from artists. Uh, uh, but I guess they were working on something uh, that they wanted to launch as a way to demonstrate their value to the, to the artist community. And that uh, has come out uh, this week, uh, which is uh, great. And they, they launched uh, a new artist-focused uh, uh, website, Spotify Artists, uh, which uh, uh, brings a, a, a number of uh, pages of information as to what they're paying, or what they're doing, uh, you know, what the, the real story is behind how streaming, the, the streaming business model works. Uh, and that's sort of the first part of this like three uh, level act that they've done. The second thing is that they've opened up their analytics to artists, so artists can apply via the next big sound to get uh, their data, and they can look at the demographics of who's listening to the tracks and how many people are listening and where they are. And the third part is that partnership with Topspin that Sid uh, mentioned uh, earlier in the show, which uh, will allow uh, artists to showcase their merchandise on Spotify and sell it right from right from there, which is amazing, really. So it's the kind of stuff that we've all been talking about on the show for the last year. Uh, that Spotify should have been doing, and they were working on it, and it's finally come out. So, uh, uh, you know, Neil, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, do you think that I feel like this can personally turn the tide around on, on the sentiment uh, around Spotify, and uh, hopefully uh, squash some of the negative press that happened over the last uh, the last few months? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge supporter of Spotify. Always have been for me from the very first time we saw it. In fact, we were the we were the second company ever to advertise on it. We've got invoice number two from Spotify. That's amazing. Um, yeah, <laughs> claim. Um, it really disappoints me to see negativity, but I think the negativity is, is uh, if it's constructive and it leads to a better service, fair enough. Um, we've, I, I, I mentioned before about the Beats integration um, and it, that won't have escaped Spotify. You know, they, this, they were talking about this six, nine months ago. Spotify, very smart. They will, they will have been putting all of this in place long before the Tom York uh, and David Byrne comments. Um, I'd imagine that this has been on their roadmap. And Sid mentioned it before. You know, these services cannot launch on day one with everything in place. Yeah. It, it takes two, three, four years getting your product right, adding the features, integrations, APIs, you, you name it. Um, I suspect that this, this whole artist integration has been something they've been planning for quite a while. And the launch of Beats has probably just sped that process up a little bit. I don't think there's any reason why Spotify would want to hide um, away, shy away from artists or to give artists more information, more ability to, to communicate with their fans. Um, you know, and I, I, this is all just part of the evolution that's going on. For artists to criticize Spotify is, is ludicrous. Sid, this is a massive win for Next Big Sound. What do you think? It is, uh, yes. That's a, a huge win for Next Big Sound. So, sorry, um, I, I should mention that, you know, to, in order to get those analytics that I talked about earlier, you have to go via Next Big Sound and sign up. So, sorry, go ahead. I just had to I mean, to it's a that. huge win for Next Big Sound, and uh, it's, but it's kind of, yeah, I always thought that Spotify would just offer it themselves. Um, so, I'm also surprised that they haven't. Uh, which makes it an even bigger win for Next Week Sound if that's what they're now pushing people towards. Um, it's a big win for artists as well because if they go via Next Week Sound, it means that they can integrate other services stats in, in there instead of just being isolated from within a Spotify created ecosystem, right? Yep. So it's not bad. I mean, it doesn't mean any extra revenue for Next Week Sound right now, but it, it'll definitely lead to an increased visibility and, and probably more subscribers to the service. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is, yeah, I know I agree. 
it's it's <laughs> nice. It's it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, you know, nothing bad to say about it. You know, you can you're gonna be able to get location data, so you can base your tours around where people are streaming tracks. It's just it's <clears> just <throat> awesome. Uh, Ryan, uh, how are your students feeling? Have you have you heard any comments yet uh, from from your base on these new uh, features as to how people are taking them? Um, no, I didn't hear anything um, uh, about the, the the newest development. Um, but I think it's it's very important. All all three of the um, of those uh, things: the um, education about um, the model and how it can can turn out into um, more revenue in the future. Um, and education is also, or, or the analytics feature is also um, a form of uh, education. Um, I think if you can see what numbers you can get from Spotify, what you can learn about your fans. Um, so um, I didn't hear anything yet, or, um, but we're doing a project right now with, with a big label. Uh, we're working um, on music analytics, uh, we're working with uh, Next Big Sound, and um, one of the topics is uh, Spotify integration. So um, I think that's, that's really, really good. Also, um, the, um, the um, partnership with Topspin will be interesting in terms of music analytics and linking um, data about um, streaming usage to purchase data, um, more um, sources about your fan data. I think that can turn into a, a really you know, good overview about what you can do with streaming data. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be like an, an awesome year for music 2014, I think. With mm. all these new services coming out, it's going to be the year where everything comes together. Finally, yay. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's all. That was... You've been saying that for a while. Yeah. It's kind of like a split personality disorder today. I, I went from being total hate to like, everything is going to be wonderful next year. Yay. <laughs> so, well, I don't know I'm what's really happening. I'm really sorry to move while you were talking, no, but okay. my uh, laptop was about to die. Okay, no, it's, it's absolutely fine. Not a problem. Uh, we see more of the lasers, so that's very exciting. Oh, oh. <laughs> stop <the> distractions! <laughs> I'm, I feel like a cat. I want to, I want to wanna... <laughs> start following the lasers on the on the ceiling. Um, and so, lasers are amazing. Lasers are good. Uh, and so, I guess we should probably uh, talk about the last story, and then we can talk a little bit about Music Hack Day for for a minute. Uh, and so, what am I, what am I going to choose? Uh, I'm going to choose HMV. I want to talk about physical retail uh, and see what what you guys have to say about that. Uh, so uh, there's a bit more news coming out of HMV this week as the company confirms a change of course uh, on what they've been doing for the past couple of years, uh, where they were increasing the focus on gadgets like iPads and whatever uh, expensive gadgets uh, in order to increase the bottom line of the company essentially uh, and reducing the space uh, at the same time for music, films, and games. Uh, now they're going to change course. So they're going to stop uh, all the nonsense with. Uh, expensive crazy gadgets and uh, they're gonna uh, increase the space given to music uh, films and games which seems to make sense because HMV uh, you know that's their bread and butter that's what they sell uh, it's a very bold move though because of course uh, uh, you know the films music and game are, are not making you know games of course they are a different story but music is not making the same amount of uh, revenues on physical like it like it used to so uh, you know what, what do you feel is uh, is the effect of that uh, were they wrong in the first place to try and focus on sales of gadgets or was it just inevitable like in a panic mode as they were sort of about to go bankrupt let's sell whatever we consumers are willing to buy uh, you know uh, Ryan on, on your end you know of course you're not from the UK so you can't comment from that perspective but uh, physical is doing very well in, in Germany are retailers also looking at gadgets as something to diversify their bottom line um well, I, I don't think there's um, an example like um, for, for the, in that case in, in, in Germany. Um, it's usually you know um, retailers um, they're selling other things like Media Markt, Saturn. You know right. they're selling um, lots of other, other stuff. And, and music has only been uh, you know a way to get people into the stores. Um, but music stores are still mostly selling music and games and DVDs and stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, cool. So I can't really uh, you know. Yeah comment on that from, from, from here. I guess the market is doing still pretty well on that front, uh, so uh, they haven't needed to, to, to go into that. Uh, uh, Sid, you know, do, do you, what do you think about HMV integrating all those gadgets when it, when it happened a couple of years back? Uh, it, it seemed natural to me at the time. I didn't have anything bad to say about it. You know, it felt like, you know, they're going to have to do it. Uh, but if they feel like they can turn it around, then great. How many HMV <coughs> stores are left? Does anyone have any idea? I think uh, it's, it's over a reduced number, 40 or 50, isn't it? Is it? Reduced I thought it was still... Right. It was and 250, I... I think they shed most of them. 
which is the one in Winchester is still there, um, but uh, I haven't seen many others. Uh, but then I I never realised I I never that's a lie. I always realised that they were selling gadgets when I walked in there, but I don't think I ever when I need a well. If I ever wanted new headphones, for example, which I probably bought the most often out of any gadget or non-physical media-related thing that HMV stocks, I would never really go into HMV to buy them. Um, right. I'm not entirely sure why, but yet, whenever I'm in there, I always know that most of the building is taken up with these gadgets, whether they're iPads or iPhones or iPods or uh, iDevices and other generic MP3 devices. Um, so, yeah, I, it's, I'm not surprised that they've made the decision. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just reading on Wikipedia now. The number is 141 stores, uh, from what I'm reading, that have been saved in the process. So there's still quite a few of them around. I, I think they closed all the ones in the airports. They were very expensive and uh, a bunch of others. But there, there's still quite a lot of H&V stores around. So it's... I, would like, I would like them to go back to being a record store. Yeah. Um, or, like, just recommendations... Um, personal recommendations and having people in the store who know what it is they're selling or have a passion or interest in the, in the media that they are selling. Yeah. Um, they also, I swear, stopped selling computer games for a while and then went back to it because uh, there aren't many places in Winchester to buy Xbox games. <laughs> and uh, I think that was one of the few places left. Yeah. But they ramped um, back on how much they were stocking for sure. So, yeah, I would like them to go back to being more of a personal touch, I guess. Yeah, you're mm. totally right. I mean, I'd love to see people that know about music more uh, that work at H&V, but it kind of feels almost like wishing that there were more people that knew about technology that worked at Dixon's uh, or Curry's now. Uh, but, yeah, that's not the case. Usually it's, it's kind of like if you ask about anything that is not in the label, they won't know what, what you're talking about. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it'd be lovely to give more jobs to people that know about music. That'd be quite nice. Uh, and, and Neil, uh, do, do you use HMV? Do you buy physical physical CDs? Have you noticed anything happening on that front? Um, no, I stopped buying physical <laughs> CDs um, about seven years ago. Um, I mean, HMV are another company that I'd bracket alongside BT. I'm afraid I'll, I'll take over your grumpiness from you. Um, they're a company <laughs> who, over the last ten years, have consistently made the wrong decisions. Every time there was a decision to be made, they made the wrong one. And this is, is just stunning. I mean, why, why someone bought them, I don't know, because they were clearly losing money hand over fist with no, no real place. Um, and the three industries that they mentioned, music, DVDs, and games, are all moving away from physical product. Let's not I mean, a record shop would be nice, but a record shop on a high street with the rent and the rates and the overheads, it's not going to work. Yeah. Um, I, I suspect that the, the major studios, and I include music, games, and the film studios, are probably... Are they, are they subsidizing it, bankrolling it? I don't know. But they've got the most to lose by HMV disappearing. And it wouldn't surprise me if, if credit terms or sale or return or whatever, they're, they're bankrolling it in some way because they just want to maintain a distribution point on the high street. That, that, is, that is the only purpose that HMV serve anymore. Yeah. Right. How's that for Grumpy? It's pretty grumpy, and it's a good way to end the show. Like, um, uh, I just want to uh, touch upon uh, the hack day with Sid. That's happening next week. I'm going to do some coverage there this on weekend. Sunday. Yeah, this, th weekend, yeah, this weekend. weekend. This weekend coming. I'm going to do some coverage on Sunday and see, what, see what's going on. Uh, anything of note to mention, Sid? Any amazing I don't know. New I haven't spoken to Martin right. um, massively um, about cool. his plans for it. So um, we don't know whether there's going to be any amazing APIs unveiled or anything like that. So um, I don't know. Um, not that I'm aware of. I mean, there's a, quite a big posse of us going along with some physical ideas. So whether it is um, weird and wonderful MIDI controllers made out of sensors or uh, whether it is creating music out of old cassette tapes and players. Right. Um, there's kind of quite a wide... Yeah, I think there's just going to... From 
the the group that I know that are going, there's just going to be some weird and wacky stuff happening, which is actually going to be quite a lot of fun um, to be involved in, I think. I'm, quite I'm looking excited forward about to being there. Um, <laughs> I've got no idea what's going to be made out of it. Uh, Rob, our designer, wrote up a blog post today about what he's hoping, what we're, we're hoping to see at the Hack Day. And I have to admit, if there are any more social personal recommendation engines um, for uh, which take one thing and give you another thing, then I'm going to be, well, yeah, um, a little bit bored. Because um, <laughs> I have to admit, there's a, that seems to be kind of what everyone always thinks of. Yeah. We've got this amazing idea. Let's let people send... I, here we go. Let's let people send a message to their friend with a track from YouTube or SoundCloud. Um, <laughs> that's uh, uh, an interesting idea. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Nice. Uh, uh, Ryan, anything to plug your end uh, uh, that you want to mention? Um, well, um, I think for, for me the most interesting thing now is um, really the, the project with um, music analytics, but... Um, I guess I said um, enough about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's great. That's awesome. And another thing I um, would maybe talk to, to um, Sid, um, yeah. I would like to talk to you maybe about another project because um, I'm doing uh, things with uh, u university and, um, and with developers here. And um, so, so we're trying to build up, you know, that kind of s small music hack day vibe here between our um, Pop Academy music business students and uh, developers. So I um, think I could learn a lot, you know, how we could maybe implement that um, sort of working here because that's the connection we would like to make more to, to bring um, music business students and uh, developers um, together. So we, we started our first project now with, um, with a universal buy and streaming button um, and, and try to, you know, do some things in that space with a um, browser plugin. Um, and, and we're planning to do a lot more in, in, in that. So. Um, uh, you know, with Mannheim, Andrea, you know that Mannheim in Germany is not so much um, with um, music hack days, not so much going on, at least in Mannheim. We tried to have one at our future music camp uh, a few years ago, but it's hard to get the developers here. So we would like to try that in, you know, in our small space here and maybe, you know, uh, like would be very interested in, in talking about, that, um, about those things. Cool. Sounds great. And I'm sure uh, uh, I'll, I'll put you in touch with Sid by email and I'm sure you guys can, can chat more about it. And uh, uh, finally, uh, Neil, anything your end? Uh, you want to plug a, you know, the uh, music, the, the Asian newsletter or anything like that? Um, music Weekly. I'm, I'm working on a, an online music magazine right now called musicweekly.asia, uh, yeah. where we try to provide a uh, uh, we provide the exclusive top 30 Asia charts based on sales and downloads um, across the, the whole territory. There, are, there, are, there is no recognized chart system out there in, in many of those countries. So, so we, we through Valium, are providing one. Um, so that's, that's a new venture that we're trying to launch, both the chart show, chart countdowns, um, coverage of, of the of the US European plus also the Southeast Asian artists um, the K-pop stuff which is uh, right. incredibly right. successful in that territory and is starting to gain a little bit of traction Psy obviously is the, the best example but there's a lot of other artists who are, are coming up behind him Psy, Psy I, I, I is reputedly recording now with Justin Bieber and um, a guy called G Dragon, because it's all Scooter Braun, um, is, is bringing together all of his artists. So I suspect next year we're going to see a lot more artists from Southeast Asia um, get into the charts and, and get recognized. That's for cool. sure. That's awesome. And uh, uh, once again, it's uh, uh, for Sid. Uh, we make awesome shit .it, the website. And then it's. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't realize I was plugging anything. I was talking about music hack day. That's nothing to do with me. I'm <laughs> okay, just yeah, attendee. sure. Of course, of course. Uh, no, uh, cool. Well, you know. Uh, it's all good. Plug. We are working on an amazing app at the moment that we're hoping to launch before Christmas Ooh, or exciting. early next year. But, uh, it should be a lot of fun if it works. Um, it's with Tiny Temper and it's the first project that we've done that the artist has actually been massively involved and excited Yay. about it as well which, uh, yeah. which very rarely happens with us anyway I think it is the first time yeah. so 
some of the guys were filming with him yesterday. Absolutely. Um, so yeah. That's awesome, and uh, uh, and I'm expect I'm fully expecting a very exciting uh, uh, virtual Christmas card as well. <laughs> I don't know if you have anything in, in the works. But <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> the pressure's on now. You've done one. <laughs> well, so this is the thing we did one last year, right? But um, we we've got a, we we came up with loads of ideas last week, but they all involved slightly longer preparation. But there was discussions about we inadvertently, accidentally managed to get the marketing manager's email for Christmas Island. Right. Um, and we were then thinking of, oh, you don't even want to see the conversations we were, ha were having. Uh, they, there were some weird and wonderful ideas. And then actually we ended up going, we're not going to do anything this year, are we? You should have just filmed um, that and then condensed it into like a 30 second clip and made that as a postcard. You're right. I should have done. Um, last year we had me and Adam sat in front of a TV where you could text in jokes and we were dressed as Father Christmas and we would uh, turn around, laugh at the joke and then come back. Uh, and, and it was all awesome. totally looped, but I had quite a few messages of, uh, someone Skyped me and uh, said, and I answered and he was like, you're not dressed as Santa. What, you thought that was live? <laughs> Um, and it was just all quite entertaining. But, um, Excellent. Yes, no, we're not probably not doing anything this year. Awesome. Well, that's uh, pretty much uh, it. And again, it's popacademy.de. And uh, for the Music Weekly, uh, it's musicweekly.asia, right? The address. For that. Yes. So perfect. Okay. Uh, we plugged everything. And well, thanks so much for listening to the show. And thanks so much for joining me, guys. Uh, uh, Digital Music Trends is available on uh, digitalmusictrends.com and on a bunch of different platforms, like I mentioned at the beginning. The handle on Twitter is at Digimusictrends. For any feedback, please do email. I do uh, like to receive emails. It's contact at digitalmusictrends.com. Uh, thanks so much for listening. Have a fantastic week. And until next time. And that's all for this week. I really hope you enjoyed the show. Check out digitalmusictrends.com and sign up to the weekly newsletter.